I had the privilege of going down to uh, Phoenix and, and retrieving my daughter from university. So I'm sure a lot of you have got kids coming home. Uh, so it was great to go down and pack up her apartment and put it all in a, uh, a U-Haul and put it in a storage unit and, you know, do all the things that needed to be done. So Tuesday afternoon after work had caught a 6.30 flight down to Phoenix. Now, if you're like me, when you fly, you get on this tin can and you sit there and it backs up, of course, and you hear the engines rev up and then it gets out to the runway and they say, okay, buckle your seatbelts, whatever, we're taking off. And all of a sudden, this thing begins to move. And at that point, what do you do? You pray. <laughs> I pray every time. I pretty much pray the same prayer every time. Because it is just stupid to go 30,000 feet in the air in a tin can. It's just not smart. And, and so, you know, as that plane is taken off, I always pray pretty much the same thing. I pray, God, help our pilots to have wisdom, to have clarity of thought, and to be alert. And put your angels on every wing and hold this thing together <laughs> as it takes off. And as it lands, because you know, if you've ever watched any of those, and never watch these shows, but if you've ever watched any of these, you know, Mayday shows that are on TV, they're all about airplanes. And when do they have problems? When they're taken off and when they're landing. That's when the majority of them that are going to crash, crash. And so every time that happens, I pray. Now, my faith is not in the pilot. My faith is in God guiding that pilot and keeping that tin can together. It's a pretty thin thin piece of tin that you're wrapped up in. You know that, right? <laughs> Flying is not the most intelligent thing to do. We weren't meant to fly. We're meant to walk. <laughs> we don't have wings. So when I fly, I pray. Now, and I have confidence. Okay, God, you've done it before. You're going to do it again, right? But that's prayer. Prayer takes faith. Prayer takes faith, and for us to be able to move through life and, and have a confidence that we're going to move through life, we have to put our faith in something, or we have to put our faith in someone. And, and when it comes to prayer, prayer gives us that opportunity to put our faith in God. And when we look at the armor of God, Paul doesn't list prayer as a piece of the armor when he talks about prayer, but he, but he does talk about the importance of prayer as he concludes the armor of God. <clears throat> See, when we pray, or when, when I pray, I show my dependence on God, my hope in Him and not in myself. Uh, I was doing a, a, a TV show, it sounds important, but it wasn't, a, a TV show uh, with, uh, with, a, with an individual here in Calgary, and, and a guy in our church uh, helps run the, the Yes TV network here in Calgary, and he asked me to be part of this panel of this TV show that he was doing, and so I was on this panel, and, and there was a Hindu priest there, there was a United Pastor, there was an atheist, and there was a Jewish rabbi, and myself, and quite a eclectic group of people, I tell you. But <clears throat> so I was bringing the evangelical thought process to the conversation. And uh, as we're going through these different conversations, one thing I learned about, and I knew a lot about, there's some about Hinduism, but one thing I learned about Hinduism is that you're basically your own God. And you worship a thousand other gods, but you're basically your own God and your reliance is in yourself. Man, I'd be in a lot of trouble. Because I'm not God, and I never will be God, and I know that I'm not that great. And if you're relying on yourself, I feel bad for you. I really do, because there is such a limit to your ability, but there's no limit to God's ability. There is no limit to what he can do. So... I'm going to talk to you about prayer and how Paul uses prayer to wrap up the armor of God. In Ephesians chapter 6, he tells us to therefore put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand when the day of evil comes. So that when you've done all this, you can stand up and you can move forward with confidence that God is working with you and for you and that he's on your side. He says, put the belt of truth on, the breastplate of righteousness, have your feet fitted with the gospel of 
of peace, take up the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, which we talked about last week, about the written Word of God and the spoken Word of God into our life. And then he goes on, he concludes it this way, and he says, pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for the Lord's people. He also says, pray also for me that whenever I speak, the words, words may be given to me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel. Now, Paul also says this last part in Colossians chapter 4, verses 2 through 3, as he talks to the church about the importance of, hey, pray for me, that I can be bold. Pray for me, that I can articulate the word of God carefully and, and, and unravel the mystery so that people can understand God's perfect plan for their life. Uh, every day or every weekend when I get up to speak or every time I get up to speak just before I get up to speak I'm always sitting there going okay Holy Spirit help me to articulate this may it be your words and not my words help me to be able to speak and show me things that I haven't even thought of yet so that I'm reliant on Holy Spirit and Paul says pray for me now let me encourage you Paul also introduces in this thought process to have people that are praying for you no matter what it is that you're going through or doing in life, don't do it alone. Uh, allow people to join with you in prayer so that when you face challenges and difficulties, you have somebody that's lifting you up so that you're not just facing them on your own. Invite people to be prayer warriors with you. We do that as a congregation. We, we have the prayer chain where if you're going facing something, call the church, let us know, or email us at info, info c or Info, info at bpchurch.ca. That's it. I just tell them. I don't email them. But <laughs> info at bpchurch.ca. And just let us know so we can stand with you. We have what we call the prayer shield here at the church that we have intercession that takes place. We have people that are praying for the service in the prayer room during the service. And if you're like, you know what? I have a passion for intercession and to pray for people and pray that God will give freedom in our services. And we'd love for you to sign up and be one of our prayer warriors in the service while I'm preaching or while the, while the worship is on. Uh, there's just different ways that we want you to engage in prayer. We have Wednesday night prayer. We have prayer pre-service prayer uh, in the morning for the first service and Saturday night we have pre-service prayer and I can always tell what the weekend is going to be like by Wednesday night pre-service prayer I really can Wednesday night pre-service prayer man if we dive into prayer on Wednesday night and there's people interceding and praying I can tell man Sunday's going to be good Sunday's going to be good because we don't wrestle against flesh and blood you might wrestle against your flesh and blood to get out of bed in the morning, but from that point on, it's principalities and powers. Okay? I mean, the, the first minute is you. The rest is everything else. But when we intentionally say, okay, God, we want to see your spirit move in our city, and we join together and we say, God, we want to see your spirit move in our church this weekend. And it's not just about what I'm going to get out of it. But God, I pray that you will help pastor communicate. I pray that you'll help our worship team lead us into worship. God, I pray that you would increase the anointing on their lives. That they can help us to move closer to you. And I pray, God, that there'll be a freedom in my own spirit. And that the person next to me that's struggling will sense your presence on my life. When we dive into prayer and we invite Holy Spirit to do these things, we see God move in supernatural ways. But when we just go through the religious ritual of showing up and we get here and we go, okay, God, what do you want to do for me? And then we leave here going, well, that wasn't that great. Then we miss out on what God wants to do because we didn't engage in prayer. We didn't engage with inviting him in. Paul says to pray continuously. I love this. You pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. So I could talk to you about prayer for weeks and weeks and weeks. So today I'm going to try to condense it into just a couple of things that we should have as baseline in our life when it comes to prayer. Engage in a conversation with God that doesn't end. That's prayer. When Paul says pray continuously, pray in the Spirit, pray on all occasions... Just start a conversation with God that does not end. It, it might, you know, take a little bit of a moment during the day, but when you're going through your day, you get up in the morning, start the conversation. 
And just invite God into your day. Invite Holy Spirit into your day. Invite God to walk with you throughout that day. And as you're going through the day, something comes up. Invite Holy Spirit to speak into that situation into your own heart. Whether it's a challenge with a coworker or it's a challenge with a kid getting them to school or whatever it is, don't just run into it in your own ability. Invite Holy Spirit to be walking with you in every aspect of your life. And when you do, and that I know it sounds silly, but it, when you do get that good parking spot, say, thank you, God. Somebody else is praying for it. You just prayed first. That's all. That's what I'm thinking. But just thank you, Lord. It, continuously invite him into your day and continue the conversation as you go along. Paul says to pray in the spirit, pray continuously or continuous prayer, all kinds of prayer and be alert. It's so important for us in our life to be alert to what's going on around us in the spirit. You're gonna face challenges every day. Every day you're gonna face challenges. Whether it's just driving in your car and somebody cuts you off and you get upset or you're going to work and somebody does something and it's a challenge, you don't know what to do. In those moments... Be alert to what is going on. When I get upset, it's like, okay, Holy Spirit, why am I upset? What's the problem? Is it me or is it something else? And when, when there's a challenge at work and, and you might be like, oh, what do I do? It's just stop and say, Holy Spirit, what is it that I need to do to be able to think through this or to work through this or to respond properly in this moment? Be alert because there's times in life when it's not just a physical problem in front of us. There's a spiritual thing going on and God wants us to see it so we can address it. And it might be in your children. It might be in a coworker. It might, whatever it might be. But if we just go, oh, that's too bad. And we move forward or we get upset and we allow it just to, then we're missing the opportunities to be alert and to listen to what Holy Spirit has to say. Now, Romans chapter Hey, Paul writes to the Romans church and he talks to them about prayer and he talks about the Holy Spirit being involved in our prayer life. He says, in the same way, the Spirit helps us in our own weakness. When we don't know how to pray or don't know what we ought to pray, for the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. Now, this is an interesting passage of Scripture because Paul tells us in Ephesians, he says, to pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers. This is an interesting kind of prayer. I had a friend of mine uh, when I pastored in Leduc uh, back in... A long time ago. Uh, but when I pastored in Leduc, there was this individual by the name of Lawrence Gillespie. Lawrence was a senior in the church when I got there and a great man. But man, could he pray. Could he pray. He'd get, we'd have Wednesday night prayer and he'd be uh, in the auditorium and he'd always kneel over here on this side in the second row and, and, and Lawrence would begin to pray. And he'd be praying in the spirit as far as like his spiritual language, praying in tongues or he'd be praying in the natural but there become a time when Lauren was praying that it would seem like it would just shift in his spirit. And I could tell it was when the Holy Spirit had got a hold of something in his spirit that he no longer could communicate in any other way but in a groan from his very innermost being interceding on behalf of something that was going on in the spirit. Now that doesn't happen to everybody, it doesn't, but when it happened to him, the atmosphere in the room always changed because he tapped into something that could not naturally be seen and God would begin to pray through him the Holy Spirit would begin to pray through Lawrence and we would and, and I would know okay God what is it and then sooner or later it's interesting people would begin to pray things out around the room and God would begin to reveal things to people as he grown now Lawrence is one of those individuals that man he he grew up learning how to pray from his parents. He was a farmer. He owned a dairy farm. And, and he, he used to tell me, man, my prayer life developed when I was milking cows because I'd be out there for hours just milking cows. And that's where I learned how to pray. And in those moments of solitude, in those moments of just working and communicating with God, he'd start a conversation in the morning and it never ended until he went to sleep. And in his sleep, I'm sure he heard God's voice. But start a conversation in the morning let it continue and your prayer life will move to this point where Holy Spirit will be able to speak things into your heart and he'll be able to reveal things to your spirit that only your spirit can wrestle with and your mind will not understand it at all. Paul goes on and he says, and he who searches the hearts and knows the mind of the spirit because the spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. 
It, it, it's our spirit that is connected to Holy Spirit. And as Holy Spirit speaks to our spirit, he reveals the heart of God so that our spirit can respond and intercede on behalf of what God desires to do. This doesn't happen by just saying, good morning, God. And then now as I lay me down to sleep, I pray my soul to keep. It doesn't happen if that's your prayer life. It happens when you engage in a conversation with God and you don't stop. And you keep moving forward, listening to his voice and allowing him to direct your life and direct what Holy Spirit is leading you to do. Ask the Holy Spirit to show you how to pray. Anytime, if you've ever been in a prayer meeting with me or a prayer service with me, you'll hear me start it off by saying, Holy Spirit, show us how to pray. Holy Spirit, show us how to pray. I encourage you to allow Holy Spirit to direct your prayer life. In Psalm chapter uh, 25, it says this, Show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God my Savior. And my hope is in you all day long. God, show me your ways. I, I, I love what the psalmist, what David writes here. And in, in chapter 24, he also writes, who can ascend the hill of the Lord? A person with a clean hands and a pure heart. It, it, he follows it up with this. He says, show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. When God shows us his ways and teaches me and he guides me, when he shows me, he has my heart. Shows me his ways, he has my heart. He's speaking to my heart and he's transforming my heart and he's revealing to me his path and his design and his, his, his purpose for my life. When he teaches me his ways, he has my hand that he can lead me, that he can lead me into what it is that he has in store for me. <clears throat> no, sorry, he has my mind. When he teaches me his ways, he has my mind that he can transform me to teach me to think like he thinks and to know what he knows and, and renew my mind. Romans chapter 12 tells us to renew our minds as an act of worship. When he teaches me his ways, he has my mind. And when he guides me, he has my hand. He takes a hold of me and he moves me forward. Now this passage of scripture, this is something I want to just encourage you with, is when you come across passages of scripture like this, or lots of scripture, remember scripture is that written word of God. Pray the written word of God. Pray it into your life. So in this passage of scripture, as you read through it, look at those points and say, okay, God, what do you say to me through this? Show me your ways. Just stop and say, God, show me your ways. God, show me your ways. Show me your way. Transform my heart. Allow me to know your desires and the ways that you want things to happen. Teach me your path. God, renew my mind to think in the way that you think. Reveal, give me revelation of who you are and what you want. Guide me in your truth. Guide me in your truth, God. Take my hand and lead me. Direct my steps. And when we pray scripture, we literally are praying God's written word over our life that transforms our life. See, prayer changes me, and then prayer can change circumstances. But prayer is meant to change me. When I communicate with God, it's not just one way. God speaks back. His Holy Spirit speaks back. His Holy Spirit convicts. It's meant to change me. A lot of times we pray because we want circumstances changed. But God wants to get a hold of our heart. He wants to get a hold of our mind. He wants to get a hold of our hand. He wants to lead us in our life. And when we pray, we invite him into our life so that he can do that. But then it does change circumstances. And we'll talk about this in a minute, but when we pray in Jesus' name, we sang about it in our last song. When we pray in Jesus' name, we're told in Scripture that we have authority to pray in Jesus' name. That we have authority because of what Jesus has done. And because we pray in his name, we have authority over the, the spiritual realm to see things happen. But there's hindrances to prayer. And in our life, sometimes there's things that stop prayer from being answered. But there's also accelerators in prayer. Things that in our life that we can see God and that God promises he will respond to. In Mark chapter 11, it tells us this. When you stand and pray, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them. So that your father in heaven may also forgive you. 
If you have something in your heart against someone else, scripture tells us to stop and forgive them. So the Holy Spirit, so that God can hear what you're saying. In math, in First Peter chapter three, Peter tells us this, the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears attentive to their prayer. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. Now, righteousness is not in of our own. Remember, we put on the, the breastplate of righteousness, which is the righteousness of Jesus, the righteousness of what he's done for us, the forgiveness that he's given us in our life. But the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. And his ears are attentive to their prayer. So if you're holding unforgiveness in your heart, get rid of it before you come to God. I know that's a challenge because sometimes that person doesn't deserve forgiveness. But neither did you. And we're all his children. And so when I don't forgive his child, he looks at me and says, you're not going to forgive your brother? Why should I forgive you? So he tells us, if you want my forgiveness... And you want my ear, forgive the way that I forgive you. And then the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ear is attentive to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those that do evil. So those that don't respond in that way of God, forgive me and help me to forgive or I forgive those that have sinned against me. See, the hindrance to prayer is sin and unforgiveness. If there's sin in my life and Holy Spirit is convicting me and I ignore his conviction, but I still am begging God for something else, realize that the the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his face is turned against those who sin. Now, we're not perfect. I know that. I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. But when we hear Holy Spirit convict us about something, stop and say, God, forgive me. Then the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. It's as simple as that. What gets in the way? Pride. What gets in the way of us being able to have this great prayer life with God? Pride. Because we don't want to or we don't feel we should have to or we, whatever it is, pride. But what opens up heaven? Humility. What opens up the the voice of God in our lives? Humility. Where we're like, yeah, Holy Spirit, sorry. I, I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have done that. The moment we do things, if we are in a continuous conversation with God throughout the day, the moment we do something that's displeasing or that offends the spirit of God that lives within us, the moment we do it, he will respond. He'll say, oh, Mark, that was rude. Oh, Mark, you shouldn't have done that. It's what I do in that moment that keeps that channel open. If I'm like, yeah, whatever, and I keep going, It's my pride, and then the face of God is against instead of his ear attentive to. Now, I understand there's there's huge grace in the kingdom of God. There's huge grace so that, you know, God's not up there ready to hit you with a hammer every time we do something wrong, and we're stubborn, and we're egotistical, and we we have too much pride to listen to his Holy Spirit speak to us. In the moment, he's not going to kick you to the curb. But if you want to have a continuous dialogue with God, be continuously open to the conviction of his Holy Spirit so that there's no hindrance in the way. So that there's forgiveness that flowing from us and to us continuously. There's an accelerator, I believe, in prayer that that helps helps us to move into that area where that conversation just continues and we see God answering those prayers. It's repentance and forgiveness. It's the opposite of the hindrance. It's forgiveness and repentance. And it's just being open to that leading of the Holy Spirit. In John chapter 16, verses 23 through 24, Jesus tells his disciples, when you pray in my name, up to this time I haven't told you to pray in my name, but when you pray in my name, you're gonna see things happen. But in order for us to move into that point, we need to have this relationship with Jesus. He says, in that day, no longer will you ask anything. For verily, truly, I tell you, my Father will give you whatever you ask 
in my name. Whatever you ask in my name. Now, when you, when you read scripture, if you believe the statements of Jesus, this is a huge statement. So why don't we see it happen all the time? Unless you're different than me, I have asked God to do things sometimes over and over again and not seen the result right away. Sometimes I see God answer prayer quickly and it's like, wow, awesome, thank you, Lord. Other times... I don't see it, even though I've said in Jesus' name. Until now, he says, you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask, and you'll receive, and your joy will be complete. I believe if we start that conversation with God in our life, and it starts by, first of all, acknowledging Jesus for who he is and inviting him into our life. Now, if you're here and you're seeking out spiritual things or you're watching online and you're seeking out spiritual things, you're like, well, I I don't understand who God is or how I can be talking to God on on a regular basis. It starts with accepting him into your life. It simply starts with saying, Jesus, I believe in who you are. I believe that you died on the cross for my sin, that, that there's no offense in me that resists God and me being in relationship. That there's nothing in me that is holding me back. And Jesus wipes that away and he literally fills us with his spirit. He places his spirit within us. And from that moment, we have this open conduit, as it were, from us to the throne room of God. Literally, that we can stand in his presence in the spirit and talk to God Almighty. So that when we are getting in a tin can and going to throw ourselves 30,000 feet in the air, we have a confidence that somebody else is in control. Somebody else is guiding our life. Somebody else is watching out for us. And he's going to be speaking into our life. He's going to be guiding. He's going to be moving. And he's literally going to move mountains when they're in the way. That he can literally step in. And that's what Jesus says here. He says that no matter what it is that you ask, I'm going to do it for you. But I believe there's something in all of that. And Jesus is making this statement and understanding that his spirit is in us. And his spirit is guiding us as we're praying. And if his spirit searches all things and his spirit knows all things and his spirit knows the heart of God, then when his spirit speaks into our heart and we're praying and we're praying what the spirit is leading us to pray, we're praying the heart of God, we're going to see God respond. And whether that's healing, because Jesus died on the cross for us to be healed. So we can, with confidence, pray for healing in Jesus' name. We can pray for God to work in our lives in supernatural ways because that's what Jesus made available to us. That's the heart of God. See, never be afraid to ask in Jesus' name. Never be afraid to ask for Jesus to move in your life, for Jesus to show up in circumstances, for Jesus to heal, for Jesus to restore, for Jesus to make new. Whatever it is, never be afraid to ask because Jesus said, ask. He said, ask. In Matthew chapter 7, Jesus says, ask and it'll be given to you. Seek and you'll find. Knock and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives. Anyone who seeks finds. And the one who knocks, the door will be open. I challenge you, if you're facing a difficulty right now and you've been asking and asking, keep asking. Just keep asking. When I was down in Phoenix this week, I was staying at a friend of mine's place, and um, he, it's, he has business in Canada and the U.S., and he has a condo down there. And when I go down, I just stay at his condo, and he's down there once a month or something like that. But typically, there's nobody there. And so I was in, in the condo, and I'm, on Thursday morning, I'm actually working on my sermon and uh, uh, before I had to run back to the university for something for Brielle because she was writing an exam. And as I'm working and praying and working away, and all of a sudden, somebody knocks at the door. And I'm like, well, this ain't my house. I'm not answering the door. And nobody's ever here normally, so who could be at the door? So I just kept working. And I just kept, and all of a sudden, bang a little bit louder. And I'm like, hmm, is there a fire somewhere that I don't know about? Is there? And so I, I, again, ignored it. And I'm sitting there, and all of a sudden, just boom, 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 boom. And I was like, well maybe it's his friend that takes care of the condo. So I'll go look and see. So I go and I 
peek through the peephole, of course, because I'm a little bit scared. And, uh, and it's the UPS guy. And so I'm like, okay, well, I open the door for him. And, and then he's, he's delivering a parcel that doesn't have my friend's name on it. And I'm like, well, I don't think I should take this. It might be a bomb. <laughs> I'm in the U.S., who knows? <laughs> if I was in Canada, yeah, I'd probably take it. But so I text my buddy, hey, who's this person? And he's like, oh, that's, he texts me back, oh, that's a partner of mine for this. He's sending, some, okay, great. So I take the parcel. But the guy got me off the couch and away from studying, which is not easy to do because I always close my door here and nobody bugs me when I'm studying because he was persistent in knocking. And sometimes God just wants to know, do you really want me to do that or do you really have faith in me? Or are you just going to go on and try to do it on your own? And sometimes God is just saying, there's timing for everything, but keep asking. Keep asking. Keep knocking. And God doesn't mind you knocking more than once or twice. You're not annoying God. You're just saying, God, I'm reliant on you. I can't do this on my own. I know that. I need you to intervene in this circumstance. Never stop knocking until God says the final whatever it is in your life. Never stop asking. So when it comes to prayer, ask Holy Spirit to guide you in your prayer. Ask him how to pray. I encourage you when you're praying and you're stopping to pray, just say, Holy Spirit, Show me how to pray. There might be things already on your heart that you want to pray on, but you haven't heard Holy Spirit speak to you and say, yeah, but I need you to pray about this. So stop and say, Holy Spirit, how do you want me to pray? Remove hindrances. If you begin to pray and Holy Spirit convicts you that there's somebody you need to forgive, either make the phone call or forgive them right there in your heart in that moment, but also follow it up with a true, hey, I need to forgive this thing. And add that as accelerators where we repent when Holy Spirit convicts us of things in our own life that we need to say, oh God, forgive me for that. God, remove that from my life. And then ask in Jesus' name. He's given you the authority in his name. He said all things are under his feet. All things. He's made a public spectacle on the cross. Colossians chapter uh, Three, I think it is, it tells us that in Colossians chapter one, verse three, it tells us that he's made a public spectacle of all things that, that are not of him, all the, all the worldly things, all the things that Satan has done by defeating them on the cross. So because of that, we have authority through Jesus, asking his name with a confidence that he can do it, no matter what it is, big or small. So Father, I pray you'll show us how to pray. God, that you will teach us how to pray. Just like your disciples said, Jesus, show us how to pray. Holy Spirit, give us ears to hear what you're saying to us. Give us, Father, eyes to see what you're doing in the natural and in the spirit. Father, give us ears to hear, eyes to see, and faith to respond. Faith to move forward. And what it is that you're speaking into our hearts or leading us to do when you take our hand, Lord, that, that you're teaching us or, or you're guiding us or you're showing, Father, whatever it is, Lord, we want you to speak into our heart. We want you to speak into our mind. We want you to lead our lives. So give us ears to hear what your spirit is saying. And God, right now, if there's things in our life, people we need to forgive or things we need to let go of or things that are hindrances in our life to prayer, Holy Spirit, convict us. God, if there's sin in our life that we're holding on to just because, just because we're stubborn, God, forgive us. Lord, help us to start that conversation and never let it end. God, never push you aside because we know we need you. We are not our own gods. We're not our, we cannot do it on our own. God, we need you. So Holy Spirit, convict us. 
And Lord, if there's anyone here that doesn't have that relationship with you, where they have that confidence that they can step into your presence at any time, anywhere. God, I pray right now, they'll just hear you say, I love you, I love you, I love you. And I've got a purpose for your life. I've got a plan for your life. And Lord, that right now, you'll just speak spirit to spirit and draw them to yourself your heads bowed and your eyes closed if you're here and as I've been trying to articulate this about prayer today you're you're thinking man how do I connect with God in this way I want to give you an opportunity to pray the most important prayer you'll ever pray which is simply asking Jesus into your life and asking his spirit to fill your life with his presence and empower you to live the life that God's created you for and if that's you today and you say you know what I need that I need Jesus in my life I don't want to walk this world alone I want Jesus in my life if, if that's you today I'd love to lead you in this prayer but just before I do I'm going to ask you to tell me who wants to pray it with me and I'm going to look across the room real quick and if that's you and you'd say I need Jesus just simply look at me on my right and your left just look up and say yeah that's me yeah thank you if that's you today you'd say I need Jesus in my life yeah and then over to my left and your right if that's you and online there's going to be a little button that comes up just click on that and that'll let us know that you're praying it there with us and so simply just pray this Jesus I believe that you are the son of God I believe that you died on the cross for my sin I ask you to forgive me remove it from my life empower me with your spirit and start the conversation that does not end and guide me in my life in Jesus name Amen let's stand and sing this song today as we close into his spirit and said close this down and turn it into a house of prayer 
and he was like, what do you mean? <laughs> why would I do that? Why would I turn, why would I close this church down as a church and just make it a place of prayer? And but the Holy Spirit continued to speak to him. He said, all right, I'll do it. And he changed it from a church to a house of prayer. And God has used it mightily in that area to reach people and to and to become even stronger than it ever was as a church and uh, he's, he's an amazing man that just you know walks by faith walks by the hearing of the voice of the holy spirit in his life he's actually preaching in edmonton this weekend and speaking here later this week but because he was in the area i was able to get him to come for wednesday night so i encourage you to come on wednesday uh, if you're able to make it out 7 o'clock, it's going to be an awesome night. Uh, and we're just going to hear God speak through this guy about prayer again. And what prayer can do and how God can transform through prayer. So if you're able to come Wednesday night at 7, uh, I encourage you to be here for that. We'll have a little bit of worship and then he's going to He's going to speak and then we're going to have a time of prayer together uh, at the end. And I know it's going to be going to be awesome. Father, I just pray in Jesus' name. Father, that all those challenges that we're about to face this week, Lord, that you will show us through your spirit how to pray. God, how to take authority, to be alert to things going on around us that naturally we just would not be aware of. But through your spirit, God, we can address the situation and Lord, our joy can be full because we know that you are working on our behalf and God, that you will work things out in Jesus' name. Amen. Our ministry team is going to be here at the front. If we can pray with you about anything, we'd love to do that. God bless you. See you Wednesday night.